Well, hey guys, Kaylee here, and welcome back to the Honeystead. I have had a very busy last couple of weeks between selling some of our bees, growing more bees, making sure that everything is good to go with them. We've also added a new feature to our homestead, which I can't wait to show you guys what that is and talk to you guys about the process of what we're doing with our garden. I did a garden tour a few weeks ago, and I came across that video and I looked back at it and I realized how empty and how bland it was. But now it's been a few weeks. Everything is coming to life between the plants. We've had babies born on the farm. We have had more bees than ever this year. I couldn't think of a better way to share with you guys. So come on, let's go see what's happening on the Honeystead. right now this probably has to be my favorite feature mainly because it's the only one that's really getting up there but we planted some peas back in very early spring and they are starting to grow up beautifully on this trellis and eventually they're going to completely wrap over at least to here I would imagine but I noticed that they're starting to grow little peas Look at that. So we've got a few of them already growing. I may have overdone it with the peas, but I just couldn't help it. They're very, very pretty and so dainty. This is some dinosaur kale that we planted and it is really taking off which is going to be awesome because we're going to actually take this and i'm going to try my luck dehydrating them and turning them into kale chips if anybody has a recipe that they like with dinosaur kale make sure to send it to us this is definitely a new one for us this zucchini is going to just trellis up and over down the center we actually planted some of haas tools marigolds and then I did go ahead and plant, I'm not sure if I'm a little late in the game, but we planted some cabbage as well, just down the row. So our raised beds are four by eight. We built them ourselves with the cedar trees that we actually milled. So all of our beds are typically four by eight. I do have one very large hexagon right in the middle, which is where we plant our herbs. I have another smaller hexagon that we're going to be planting very soon. I'm not quite sure with what. So for basil, this is our first time growing anything really in this ground cover. So I'm kind of excited to see how well this does. We did go ahead and plant a few different varieties of basil. We've got this, which is a dark opal basil. Then we have a few cinnamon basils and some Thai holy basil. We also took some of our extra fence and T-posts and went ahead and planted straight down. These two rows are actually gonna be two different types, actually three different types of cucumbers. And they're already starting to pop up. So I'm pretty excited to see the other one. So we planted pickling cucumbers, uh, one pickling cucumber, one dual porpoise, cucumber and then the other variety that we are pretty excited to see if we can grow is a cucamelon. I planted a few bush beans straight down this line. Look at this little guy. <laughs> this is just a regular bush bean. What I'm really excited about though is Haas Tools sent us over so many zinnias. I was really excited the other day when I came up and I saw that they're already starting to pop up like crazy. But all of this, this is just gonna be, just gonna be zinnia flowers. We also have three, three or four different types of yellow and green squash. I need to get in here and actually weed out all of our potato patches, but they are growing. This whole ground was nice and soft 
I'm definitely pretty excited to see how much potatoes that we're actually gonna grow. So I'm doing something just a little bit different with our potatoes this year. We did go ahead and start a good amount in this soft ground that we have. I need to go out, I need to come through and weed and just kind of clean up the edges. I put a few potato plants here and then I actually have on the back side of one of our compost piles which was mainly heavy straw. I actually planted a few there because I've seen some people who have extreme success. Now next year I'm probably going to do something completely different but that is kind of part of gardening. You know you have an idea, you try it, you see if it works and then Next year you might do it completely different. So we will know if this works well for us or not. Check out these onions. These are going to be massive. We already harvested a good amount of radishes, but we did go ahead and throw down some more seed. This go around, we're trying watermelon radish. So I'll definitely let you guys know what we think. So I don't know if you can see this right here, but we planted a good amount of good. Kalunga is a Thai ginger and we eat a lot of Thai food here. Home cooked, of course. This little octagon is our herb garden. Now we kind of just threw a bunch of stuff in here. A lot of this came back from last year, but this year we, we planted some more basil. My rosemary is doing really well. Mint is always, successful here. I had to put a veil on. Today has been an interesting day with bees. I actually, earlier when I was out, I was trying to do a video and one of the bees did not warn me. And she did go ahead and give me a, a nice little sting in my cheek because we're at that time of day where they're all kind of settling in and I don't want to mess with them too much. I had to add honey supers to quite a few hives that we have. So I kind of agitated them a little bit and then we were actually pretty lucky because earlier today we had a swarm move into one of our empty colonies and they are booming. I can already tell you that they're gonna have to be in a box pretty soon. They actually moved into one of our nuke boxes that we had set up. I was getting ready to create another nuke because we had, we've had a few people that have been messaging about, hey, we'd like to buy some bees. And we're kind of to our point now where we are having to buy more equipment because we weren't anticipating this many hives. So we added honey supers, a swarm caught us, created some more nukes, and I think I agitated them a little bit. So we're wearing a veil, but seriously, you guys need to check the sage out. So I'm gonna be completely honest. I have never seen my sage or have had my sage survive over winter and go to bloom this is my first year and i think it might be because of how mild it is but let me just tell you the sage flower is is turning into one of my favorite flowers that we actually have here and it's not even in full peak of all my other flowers that we have so that is that is definitely to say something i've been watching my sage bush grow and i'm completely in love with the color I have a good amount of people that ask me about what do I plant for my bees. The majority of the things that I plant for my bees are actually herbs. One, because it's a dual purpose thing. I can use them, they can use them, they, everybody enjoys them. I actually don't plant a large crop specifically for my bees. The reason why is because there's so much around that they have that they can use and forage and, and, have, as a, and have as a resource requires nothing from me. I put out a video a long time ago that discussed about planting herbs and what to choose and why to choose it. When it comes to herbs, I like to focus on something that has quite a bit of a bloom. All of the basils, hyssop, now sage, mint, all of it. The bees just, the bees completely adore all of the herbs, but this isn't their main resource. They have miles and miles of resources that are there that are good for them. We have an abundance of cherry trees here. We have poplar, we, we have clover galore around our farm. So with that, the majority of our honey is strictly wildflower because it's everything.
I have a whole bed of carrots that I'm that I'm really looking forward to harvesting. That's probably my favorite vegetable that we actually have growing. And I think this year we planted like four or five different varieties. So our basket is definitely gonna have some beautiful coloring. I'm also really excited about this kale too. So I planted a whole four by eight bed in two different stages. This side we planted earlier and we're doing it as a cut and come again style. That's why it's so thick and heavy because I can come in and, and harvest what we need. And, and of course my random celery plant that we have growing right there. This lettuce came from Haas Tools as well. It's one of their variety packs. I'll make sure to put the link down below, but look how stunning this color is. And it's so delicious as well. Check this out. Look at all of our peaches. I'm very excited about making some peach cobbler. And then our apple tree, it's a big one. I just saw, we're starting to get some apples. Quite a bit of them. The first year that we moved into our house, we actually didn't have anything established. I told you guys that in another video about how my husband and I basically built everything here that we have. And the only thing that was here previously was this large apple tree. My husband wanted to cut it. Uh, we wanted to put our garden here, but I wanted to see what it was before we cut it down. And we added a few other apple trees here on the farm, and then of course the bees. And then I noticed that we had apples. And I'm really happy that we did not cut that apple tree down and gave it a chance. And as I mentioned earlier that we don't plant anything for the bees because there's plenty for them to have and forage on, this whole pasture is clover and they absolutely love it. If you guys follow our Instagram, you probably have already seen this, but if you don't, our latest addition to our homestead and part of our garden and growing our food is right beside me. Now the question is, do I wait do I wait until it's dark to show you, or should I start showing you now? <laughs> Isn't it spectacular? So we planted over 200 tomatoes, a few different varieties. A lot of my time that I spend in the garden is not so much in the middle of the day. It, it's more or less in the evenings and then also either early, early in the morning, but most of the time during the day, I'm not out here. I prefer to be out here in the evening or later at night. We hung some really cool lights and I'm really enjoying being out here. So my dad, my mom, my husband, the kids, everybody kind of came together to help get this planted. What I like about our greenhouse is I have, I have it set on an automatic thermostat. So when the temperature hits a certain degrees, all the vents open and the fan kicks on which it's a huge relief because it gets hot out here. So I don't want to necessarily cook my, cook my plants. And I also set up a drip irrigation line that I run in the evenings. This, this cat literally goes everywhere I go. It does not matter. He just loves being, loves being a part of everything. So yes, we set up a, drip irrigation line planted all the tomatoes we planted them about a foot apart from each other the only other thing that i need to do is come through here i'm gonna i'm gonna prune them a good bit 
and then also we're gonna hang a cable and the tomahawk uh, hooks so that we can grow all of our tomato plants vertically. We decided to do mainly peppers and tomatoes in here for right now. Come this fall, we'll be able to then decide what, what else we'd like to grow. We'll also have a blower in between the two layers of plastic for this fall and winter um, to make sure that the plants stay nice and nice and warm. But it's definitely a joy to be in here and then coming out here and seeing that all the plants are growing and they're doing really well, it of course makes it all worthwhile. But we have two entrances. We have the fan, two vents on the front. I also have fans that we're gonna install inside just to kind of keep the air moving. We are also, we also have a shade cloth that is coming, I'm kind of waiting for that to come in. A lot of the tomatoes that we're growing are essentially going to be for our pantry for stocking and then we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes so the other part to this is this is going to this is kind of our market garden we're gonna be able to sell tomatoes and and take that money and use it to put back into the homestead and kind of help grow more of the ventures that we have but seeing all of the plants in the ground made it totally worth it this is a huge adventure for for us to learn about growing our own in this now so far it's been successful and i'm already noticing that a lot of our tomato plants are starting to bloom already the price per pound for tomatoes is kind of why we decided to grow so many in this space right now. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of the garden with me. There are a few other topics that we're gonna start that we're gonna start diving in and connecting the beekeeping world with the gardening world. And some of the questions that we have that have been coming through are about pesticides and what is bee friendly. Definitely make sure to like and subscribe to our videos. And of course, hit that little bell button so you guys can get a notification when we put out a new video and also go live. We'll have a lot to share with you guys here in the near future. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old.